Hello everyone and welcome to the AmsCast. This is the second episode and my guest today is, well he doesn't really need any introduction but he has been around YouTube it seems forever. I think a 16 year career on YouTube but before that he was drawing comics and starring on Games World and X League and it was collaborating with the likes of ScrewAttack and I think he's done pretty much everything and even published a book I think the beginning of this year. Uh, yes. Guru Larry, welcome to the Amscast. Hello, you. How are you doing, sir? I, I am doing most excellently, sir. Thank you very much for inviting me to your excellent podcast of interviewness. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on, sir. You're, you're yes. illustriousless. Is that a word? Well, yeah, I, well, you can use that on me if you want, you know. There's nothing okay. better than stroking my ego for a podcast. Well, you, you, you kind of don't like that, really, do you? Uh, no, it's worse. It's just... I don't, I don't like being sort of thinking of as I'm better than everybody else and stuff like that. I just, no. I just feel a bit embarrassing and awkward. I think well. it's because your material body of work is vast, isn't it? it uh, you could say that. You could say that. Just <laughs> yeah. come up with any old bollocks and that and put it online and hope for the best. So your description of your material is any old bollocks. Yes. That's the that's the Click official. Yes, clickbaiting bollocks. But well, that's well, that's an honest discussion. An honest description. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You never, you never knew. Mind blowing. I, I never knew. I never knew. The first time yeah. I ever come across you was actually, I think it was movie mistakes. Oh okay. Um, and then of course following on to the games, Yanks can't wank, which is one of your most successful video series. Is um, yeah, I think it got uh, sort of got me the, the foothold on the internet. I think that one. Yeah, yeah. Because you you did that you did that in collaboration with um, Screw Attack, was it? originally yes i've done that on screw attack and then i sort of went off on my own thing afterwards did that help you get like a foothold in the, in the americas should we say yeah well they they wanted to see uh, sort of british stuff sort of you know because all they do is talk about nintendo stuff all the time over there so mm. it, they just thought of it quite of a, a refreshing difference to seeing a sort of somebody else's nostalgia but from a different culture from as the, it were from the british point of view because yeah. it's very different over here of course this well we had home computers and stuff like that they didn't really you know they just focused on the nintendo the whole time and that well we grew off started on home computers and they wanted to stuff like the master system and stuff yeah. like that as well so well it's the uh, the consoles that really started to take off was during the 16-bit era i think over here pretty much so yeah i mean that's when it became sort of mainstream sort of mm. the mega drive launch and stuff like that and super nintendo yeah i remember the mega drive and the super nintendo were pretty massive but hey we're doing it we're doing a a bit of a jump the gun here, aren't we? So let's Ooh. go right back. Let's go back to yeah, the go beginning. Back. <laughs> go back to your early days and how you ever got started. Because um, for, for, if you look, if you read your fanopedia, in because mm -hmm. uh, you've got one, yes. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Um, it's got lots of tidbits and details. And because you started doing comics, didn't you? That's how you started off. Uh, well, that, that was uh, well, sort of comics. I used to do artwork, uh, sort of freelance manga and anime stuff for the video game industry, mostly, mm. which basically consisted of me going around spamming everyone and occasionally getting a job out of it. Is so, that how you basically did it? Just just spam yeah. them? I mean, yeah, most people, most people never responded. Some people said, oh, thank you very much for your response. We'll keep you on file, which is a polite way of telling me to piss off. Yeah. And uh, yeah, sometimes uh, I got really lucky and had somebody go, oh, yeah, we're looking out for somebody like you, so... Did you do some work with Rockstar, didn't you? I did one piece. I did uh, um, uh, that game. I've forgotten what it's called. Uh, I've forgotten what it's called Oni. as well. Only. Only, that's it. Only, yes. So I've done that for them, yes. Some hard work for them. That was quite early early days of Rockstar, wasn't it, as well? Yes, that was pre... I didn't mean, think it might have been before Grand Theft Auto 3 came out. I think it was. I think it was just after GTA 2, maybe. Hmm. Well, no, it's around about 9-11 as well, because that's just before that happened. So about 2001, that would have been. That was a, an interesting marker you put in there. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, I, I stopped, because I never heard from the bloke again after that, so I don't know what happened to him. And their their offices were in the vicinity of the World Trade Center at the time. So Right, so that, never... was, that was Rockstar US then? Yes. You were working with then? Mm. Not Rockstar UK? No, I don't think they really existed back then. Uh, yeah, knowledge, because they were but... still DMA, weren't they? They could have been. At that point. Well, that's the publisher, that's the developer, though, isn't it? DMA. Yeah. yeah. But they were associated with um, 
yeah it was all yeah. it was, so it, it's a, it's a big mess isn't it really <laughs> yes yeah it's just, it's just a tangled sort of thing of trying to recall what we did at, what you did and when really for that well that, that that's that I mean, that's an interesting start to your career so how did you get into this video making i mean it wasn't straight away was it because i think you did some tv work first you got into tv work after that would, would that be correct uh, but yeah i started doing a show on sky called game guru uh, which was basically a live phone-in show where people would ask for cheats and i'd place them up on tv so how did you get that gig? How did you get that? Did you approach uh, Sky was, or? And no, it was uh, there's a uh, there's a Brit Xbox forums. Uh, I don't know if you ever remember them. Uh, sort of an Xbox forum for British people, obviously. Uh, they had uh, there's a guy uh, posted on there saying uh, Gareth Williams. Gareth Williams. He's a guy who does PR with Big Boy Barry now. Don't right. You know him. Okay. Uh, yep. Anyway, he posted on there because he was in charge of the channel, uh, the net doing that show at the time. And uh, everybody, they're, they're a bit of a bit of assholes on that forum, so they just started to making fun of him. You know, going, oh, you know, you're just coming on there and that, your crappy show and stuff. And I thought I might as well apply and see if I could get anything. And um, uh, only one other person applied, which is my friend Ed, who li would later get a job on the show as well. And uh, yeah, I got the job from there. Really, just applying on the forum. So that was the kind of was that the genesis of the Guru Larry Monica. Yeah, the Mega Drive of the Guru Larry Monica, yeah. Is that where we it came British. from? Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, well, that's that's where the Guru Larry name came from, because everybody on the show was called Guru this and Guru that. There's like a Guru Chris. Yeah. Uh, Guru Guru Ed, who's my friend who applied, and Guru Wes as well, and my friend I met on the show. So that's where the, 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 the infamous now name comes from? Yes. And I sort of kept it with it, and I basically it was to keep. And basically, I kept it half the time just to annoy Wes because he hated the you being used being called Guru Wes. <laughs> so, but you, you're more so more kept... known though as as, Bun, as Larry Bundy Junior, though more commonly as well. I do, though. but that was half the time I was having to change YouTube channels and Twitter accounts and stuff like that. And that's why I couldn't use the Guru Larry moniker. But you yeah. know, it just sounded a bit egotistical being calling yourself a Guru all the time and stuff like that. So, so you're not a self-confessed Guru then. No, it's just uh, a name that was thrown upon me that I kept just to annoy a friend. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. A, that's how all the best ideas start. Yeah. Just by annoying a mate. Been, <laughs> yeah, just for carrying and it's been carrying on for about 15 years since. So, I all think it's lost all meaning die. now on him. He doesn't Sorry? care anymore. I think it's lost all meaning on him now, and he yeah, doesn't annoy him anymore. Well, it's, it's become a brand, doesn't it? So, I suppose so. I suppose so. It's a bit weird people call me Guru, though. I prefer people call me Larry and stuff. But I don't think I've ever called you Guru. I don't, when, 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 no, when did, when I think Americans call me Guru. More oh, than they like the that kind of stuff, though. Yeah, but a lot of the Brits just call me Larry and that. <laughs> just that bloke. <laughs> yeah, that one, yeah. <laughs> that one. Um, so how did you get into... So that was... Go, so going on from there, you did some TV shows, didn't you? You did Head to Head? Uh, that was before. That was before. Oh, that was in my teenagers. Yeah, I went on. Uh, well, the first show I ever applied to go on was series two of Games Master. Right. Uh, and it was the challenge uh, for Joe and Mac on series two. I don't know if you remember that. And uh, basically, they auditioned me to play that. And basically, they gave me such a ridiculously tight time. Like, even though I ran and missed every single enemy in the game, I couldn't even get to the boss in time for the clock they wanted me to do it. And on the final challenge, they gave him another like minute at least to do it. So that's why I failed the audition because it just didn't give me enough time. But I went, I did actually appear in the audience for that series as well. Yeah, yeah, it was at Sudbury Pump House where they. Yeah, it lots was, of, like, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes, because I was Red I was at school at the time, and a friend, a classmate, actually auditioned for Games Master, and he oh, got yeah. to be on the show. Oh, and lucky sod. I think well, his name was Chevron. Oh, yeah. And I think he did the Strider challenge on the Mega Drive. Oh, okay. I th I'm not sure whether it was Series One or Series Two. I, th I want to say it's Series Two. Um, did he? Did he win? I think he did. Oh, okay. So and, he got a uh, joystick. And he ate, well, he, he ate, I think he brought his Games Master Golden Joystick into school. Ah. Oh. So did yeah. you nick it? Uh, <laughs> so everyone was fawning over him. You can imagine the girls were. Oh yeah. Him. Oh yeah. He must be getting loads of it. So. He was. He was. So, so basically, well, you did your toe in Games Master. Did you ever go on um, 
the Andy Crane Violet Berlin show. Um, no, no, that was but, basically that was filmed up north as well in Manchester or bad Sheffield influence, wasn't it? So yeah, so that's main reason I didn't do it. And also, it's just most of it was just standing in the standing in that room playing games while they talked around you and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, couldn't do much. You weren't. Yeah, you know, they already picked the people to interview and stuff like that. So it wasn't really much of a a reason to go on there, really. No. So, so yes. So and then and then was Games World after that? I guess uh, it was head to head. It was head to head. Yeah, uh, which was a children's channel gaming show. Uh, I went on once uh, to play kick off on the Mega Drive, and I got told the wrong buttons, and I lost miserably on penalties. Uh, then I auditioned again to go, and uh, yeah. and luckily it was on Rock and Roll Racing, which I'm freakishly good at. So I managed to win all the rounds on that, and won a mountain bike. Well, you got a mountain bike for your troubles, and you also kept up a, a brilliant English tradition of losing miser miserably on penalties. Yes. So, flying the flag. Yes. <laughs> it's a, it's, a, it's so, a time on a tradition. The time uh, on tradition. I, and then I went back on the uh, Champions of Champions edition, where all the people who had previously won mountain bikes and stuff like that come back for a like, knockoff tournament. And I ended up coming second. Ah, oh, so close. So, yeah. Yes. Yes, and I won a copy of Mario Paint for that. Mario, oh, Mario Paint on the Super Nintendo, yes, mm. with the with the infamous SNES mouse. Yes, that's the one. And the person who came first won a, uh, a petrol powered uh, re remote control uh, helicopter. Oh, so good job! I don't know if he man man ever managed to uh, Crush put it, it together. <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, he went. He, I did see him. Uh, he went on games. Uh, he went on Games World uh, a couple of weeks later. He told me he was auditioning for it, and he lost in the first round. It's like playing some penalty game in a Neo Geo soccer game. Well, that's good because that leads us on to Games World. Then, so you appeared oh, yes. on, on Games World. Was it the? I think it was the last series you appeared on. Was it? Yeah, Series Four, I believe, when it was set on a uh, and sort of Aztec jungle thing. Yeah. So yeah, that was me on there. Yes, because I auditioned. I auditioned to go on Series Two and Series Three, and failed. Both of them, unfortunately. But then again, I was, I was a bit naff, to be honest. Was they, that to be they a ask you sort of, They try and ask you, when you audition, they ask you like questions. Oh, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said stupid stuff. Oh, I want to program games for a living. Because, yeah. oh, we've never heard that one before. Yeah. So I should have, you know, in hindsight, I should have said something more wacky or something. Yes, I want to make uh, crazy videos about um, obscure games and obscure facts. Yeah. I should have said something like that. Wanna, I just want to make a career in the sea shitting on Peter Molyneux. So. Well, that, that's always a good one as well. Yeah. Um, moving on to Jack Jack Tramell next, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've had a couple of digs at him as well in the past. Yeah, you it? have. I know. I've I've watched plenty of your material in Steam. Indeed. Oh. Um. So so Games World sort of led that, and that did, how did that lead on to X League? Then. Well, X League was uh, years later. Um. Basically, off. I was away from Games Game Network. Uh, I finished there about a year, yeah. and I was uh, given, and uh, basically when I was there, I was considered like uh, in the industry, so I used to get a free subscription to MCV magazine, which is like the trade hmm. magazine that you get every month, and in there they said there was a, uh, these two people talking about bringing out a new channel, a new network, uh, an eSports network, yeah. and I wrote to them and said, do you want some uh, additional content, stuff like uh, uh, sort of you know just additional content the sort of normal gaming stuff and that and uh at that time i just started on screw attack and i submitted some some of the uh game chance count wank episodes to them and they liked the idea of doing a retro gaming thing yeah and uh yes and they started being filler for their uh their chart show and apparently most people only tuned in for the retro segment and they immediately tuned out afterwards because nobody cares about game charts yes apparently. so no, uh, don't do we no not really yes um, so yes yeah when someone always and, brings one of those one of those one of those sort of like tables up of best-selling consoles or stuff you, you don't really don't care about the sales figures you just care about how good you like the machine kind of thing pretty much so yeah i mean there's been some terrible machines that have been you know had some classic games just because nobody bought them mm exactly so so yeah and yeah the sh i was supposed to do a, a bigger retro show on there as it was we were supposed to be the sort of like the side in side presenters and um a guy uh it was team vvv alan boyston do you know alan boyston at all i don't know oh okay he's a, he's a massive tool bloke here you see him often at the sort of 
play expos as I'd, well. I they... probably have met him, but um... yeah, he's, he's really, really tall, really tall bloke. He's a lovely bloke, and uh, he was supposed to present it originally, but he got let go for praising a rival esports network. They didn't like him saying nice things about the competition, so they fired him. So we got our own thing off that. Really, we got shoved up. Right. So he went off reservation then. Yes. Mm. I mean, was, I mean, he was, he's only being very sort of polite and sort of, yeah, you know, Fair. professional and that, just saying nice things about the competition. But they didn't like that. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, so he like, got let go, unfortunately. Kind of like and, uh, yeah. McDonald's and saying you like Burger King burgers or something. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Yeah, and you get booted out. <laughs> <laughs> so that, so that I'm assuming then X League was during the, the beginnings of your YouTube journey then with, with screw attack and stuff i don't want that tied in around that time and that i mean we were trying to get screw attack their own tv series on network on game network but not game network on x league but they they sort of mess around because they kept, kept wanting too much money on there and stuff like that so well, that was a bit frustrating no uh screw attack uh they wanted like silly amounts of money to appear on this tiny little network and stuff like that so that sort of fell out the window so we covered their bases as well we started a top 10 show on there wasn't Larry's top 10 because that, that was the uh, replacement for the show that Screwtech was going to have until they started asking for silly amounts of money here. Yeah. So I'm rather a bit leeching off the popularity of another YouTube network or something, YouTube personal channel and stuff like that. I wanted to go alone and that. So I started, I started my guru, my Larry Bundy Jr. account because yeah. I did have Screwtech Europe on there and yeah. Screwtech kept threatening to sue me if, if I kept using a name and stuff like that. And they want me to close down the channel and that. And I, I didn't. I just wanted to test them. Yeah. Um, they never did anything because they turned out they were just trying to bully me. I'm not surprised there, really. Yes. Am I? Yes. No. So, so it started with the Guru Larry channel, didn't it? And then you had one. Uh, uh, my Guru Larry channel started in like 2006, but I was just uploading videos of fat kids falling off skateboards and stuff like that for that. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't until my Larry Bundy Junior account that I started putting up proper my yeah. own videos. I mean, they were they were on my Screw Attack Europe account as well, but that's. So this I sort was, of that. Uh, yeah. yeah. So that, 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 changed, so, that changes Guru Larry Gaming, if you're wondering. What yeah, Guru, yeah, was the second channel, was it? Yeah. Yeah. That is, yeah. I just put I just put our stuff on there for sort of Patreon supporters now, so. Yeah. But the primary channel is now uh, Larry Bundy Jr., isn't it? Yes. yes. Well, it's, that's where I get all the traction and views for, so it's been madness to go on to a small, much smaller channel now, so. So you are uh, the proud owner of a YouTube Platinum or Gold? Silver. Silver one now. Silver, yes. So, what's the silver? 250? 100. 100, right. Yeah, you don't get anything now until a million. Oh, right. Say. It's a big jump now. Mm. So, you go from. It'd be nice to get one at 500, but no. Yeah, you used to, didn't you? I, yeah. They were planning on doing one for 10,000, a red one. They were, like weren't they? Yes. Yeah, but obviously, you know, I was, they want to sort of. Uh, <laughs> they don't want, to, you know, trying to please the plebs too much with their trinkets. No, Was they don't. Work? Yeah, too, well, nowadays they appear to be too busy pushing mainstream stuff, which is a shame. Oh, yes, crap. Yeah, there's a look on bloody. I don't, don't see the point. Of the trending tab. I've never looked on there. No. And every time I've accidentally did click on it, it's just just bloody James Corden videos or crap yeah. like that. It's just yeah. It's, it's just celebrity videos, um, like yeah. high, high profile American uh, news networks. Yeah, well, it's... this what what top of the video at the moment we're trending is reacting to my girlfriend versus Bell Deafening memes. Oh, Bell Deafening! Oh God! Oh, that's it. Yeah, <sighs> dear. Well, we won't talk about her. Um, so, so go well. So, your career is wow. Lots of ups and downs there. Um, yeah. Have you, have you enjoyed it? It was, it's all right. It's quite a, an interesting roller coaster. Now, I suppose it's helped me in the long run. But so it sounds like it's been stressful at times. Yes, it has. Yeah, I mean, there's it's, it's a lot of work involved and stuff like that, and you always get drama coming here and there as well. Unfortunately, there's Infamous always drama. YouTube drama. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. And have you ever gone into direct trouble for any any of the videos like the game Janks can't wank or anything like that? No, no. Uh, movie mistakes is the only one I really got any sort of uh, trouble for. Yeah. And that's uh, just these companies filing copyright on behalf of these movie studios. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, even though it's completely fair use in that, they'll still uh, fight you for it. Yeah, and uh, I had uh, I, actually, I wrote to Universal asking if they could lift it, and the woman there said, uh, "Well, she basically said that if it's a, a Steven Spielberg movie, he's beyond the law." She essentially <laughs> implied, "Yeah, 
but he can he can file cop you know he can file copyright on fair use products because it's Steven Spielberg and right. he's obviously at beyond approach. So Steven Spielberg can Thanos your videos out. Yeah, it's yeah, amazing. just because he feels like it, just because he wants to obliterate. I mean, obviously in real life, no, he does. He probably doesn't know I exist. Yeah, but uh, it it just uh, trying to they they just intimidate you. They yeah. send you. A, they also send you a letter saying, "Oh, this is what will happen to your channel." You know, uh, your channel will go down, and that you'll have a bad credit rating, and your family will be murdered in the streets or something. I, you know, just horrible <laughs> things to try and intimidate you. So, yeah, bring it on then. I I disown those comments. I don't think yeah. they would have said <laughs> murdering your family. Mm. Um, yeah. But moving on from that. <laughs> Uh, so you, you know what that winds me up actually sometimes because essentially what you're doing is when you when you say I mean I got into you watching movie mistakes um, yeah. and um, I mean that's the main reason I don't do it anymore because I can't be asked to put up that bullshit yeah put up the copyright strikes and all that kind yeah. of crap and um, but I got into that and and because you know you never notice these mistakes that are in films and um, that, you must have done a bit a fair bit of research and been into your films to notice these things. Yeah, well, I just sort of sourced information from the internet and sort of newspapers and magazines and stuff over the years. And that's how I got it, really. Mm. I mean, I had some great... Somebody... My favourite comment ever, somebody leaving a thing saying, oh, thanks, I can't watch my favourite movie anymore, you annoying voice bastard. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you're welcome. It's, you know, that's... Yeah, Wait, you you can't disagree with with the sentiment. Yeah, you ruined my favourite movie, you annoying voice bastard. (laughs) So that cracked me up. Well, I, I would, have, I would have, I would have creased up actually that one. Big thumbs yeah. down. Oh, I love, I love getting some comments. Oh my, you must yeah. get some absolute crackers. Uh, the uh, board game video I done with Ashens. It, some some foreign person goes, "Hold up, two grown mans playing a children game." Sad. <laughs> Apart from the spelling being completely wrong. Yeah, yeah, two grown mans. And we, we were thinking about, yeah, we thought about doing a YouTube channel called Two Growed Mans for a bit as well, because <laughs> it was so funny. For for Stuart got uh, um, Barshans off the ground, wasn't it? Oh yes, <laughs> well that's gone now. So yeah, yeah, don't work. Does he work? With, he works with Barry still, doesn't he? I think I think the occasional piece, but Barry didn't want to do it anymore. He got fed up with having to travel all the way to London yeah. every time and that. So it was a bit of a. A location geography a, issue for both of them, really. A, I mean, he lives actually lives in Norwich, so yeah. Um, you did, you've done some quite a lot of work with Stuart, though, haven't you, Stuart Ashens? Yeah, quite a lot. Yes, as sort of one of the early, early people I sort of done videos with, and that yeah. You did the, uh, you did the, do you still do your New Year's roundup? Uh, I do a Christmas Day video. We we're going to be doing an E3 video this year, but it's sort of gone to hell in a handbasket because of the virus. So I'm not yeah. sure if we'll be doing one this year. Really? We're sort of waiting out for Microsoft to announce their stuff really, but uh, it was a bit disappointing this year. So we might, I don't know what's happening there to be honest. I used to do a commentary on the, uh, on the, on um, uh, the expo, didn't you? The, the, the E3. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. That was yeah. it. We were talking about. Yeah. But the E3 was cancelled, wasn't it? So it was, yeah. So there's not much, I think it might be cancelled in general anyway, because everybody was moving out to do their own sort of live event because they got a bit fed up of being tied down to having it to do it one day each this particular week and stuff like that when yeah. they can just do it on their own speed and yeah. everybody tune in. Yeah, because well, Nintendo do their monthly thing, don't they? Yeah, that's what they went off into doing. I mean, Microsoft done their own thing, Ubisoft's doing their own thing, EA, uh, Bethesda, and everybody's doing their own thing and that. So there's it's yeah. becoming less relevant at E3 and they were I do yeah. know that this year was originally planned to be just a public event rather than anything trade hmm we well, mentioned one of your favourite pub- uh, publishers there uh, EA, EA. <laughs> yes everything's <laughs> awful yeah <laughs> well you could unpack a lot with EA couldn't you over the- oh dear. yeah um, it's not banging your head against the wall with EA oh it is yes, what- uh, but they they were I would say Akin to the US gold of our day, <laughs> I suppose so. Yes, at least, yeah, in a way, yeah, at least disappointing arcade ports. And they yeah. haven't got their own tier techs, though, unfortunately. They just closed down good companies. No, they well, they got their own tier techs and they didn't get time soft either, did they? No, so they, they were spared that, I guess. Oh, <laughs> we're not going to mention Super Grand, <laughs> no, ah. Oh. <laughs> That one of Tyne Soft specials, wasn't it? 
I believe so. Yes, I think they made. Two, I did hear there was two Super Grand games as well. What was the other one? Super Great Grand was it? I think. I'm not sure, but I've, I just know the one about her on a flying bike and that shooting people. Oh. That's the only one I remember. Dreadful on everything, including the Amstrad. And I think we'll move on to the Amstrad now. This is called the Amscast, yes. after oh, all. Oh, yes. We haven't That's spoken not about you that. to talk about the Amstrad. Well, we've spoken a bit about your career, and obviously now you are prolific with the uh, the Fact Hunt series. Yes. I said that very carefully, because mm -hmm. I know that you deliberately named it that. <laughs> Well, the, 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 show, the show was originally going to be called Guru Larry's Fact Hunt, and uh, I thought that was a bit too on the nose. Also, it's completely irrelevant now as well. Cause I just that is yeah. relevant now, and I will give you a massive congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. For the astonishing work that you've done uh, to get fit and healthy. It's amazing. And um, there's, a, I think you, you, you're not ashamed of it, are you? Because the video that we did many years ago. You were rather I don't like... recognise myself anymore no. in that video. That's the weirdest thing, because that's not me anymore. That person no longer exists, as it were. Yeah. I mean, that, I'm still in... the same arsehole around, but <laughs> it, that, that person physically doesn't exist anymore, so... You're still the same annoying bastard voice. That's that... the one, yes. That's annoying the one. voiced bastard, yeah. That's the one. That's the one. But the the, the, the mind is the same, but the body is... Uh, you morphed into a new form. Yeah, it's a bit more energetic this time. And like, a, like a transformer. Aggressive. <laughs> yes <laughs> it's good doing that video though that was fun doing that video it was it was fun yeah it's a shame it's the first time i ever got to meet you and you buggered off afterwards yeah i did sorry i, I moved to cornwall yeah. after that didn't i yeah <laughs> never so, mind yeah. well we did, did meet at play out? expo london though oh that's all right yeah yes we did yeah we had a i think we had a hot dog or something in the food plaza or something that's all right yeah something like that and um, we i don't, can't remember who we were talking to we were, we were talking with another fella but i can't remember now it's a long time ago now i said there's loads of people were there yeah, there was. There was. Um, anyway, we're digressing into our personal uh, anecdotes here. Um, yes. <laughs> let's get back to games. So, obviously, you specialise in talking about the 8 bits and the consoles and stuff like that. That's kind, I of, do your for talk about them, yeah. kind of your forte, isn't it, really? Your era. Yes. So, was the Amstrad the first game system you had, or did you have something before? Well, that? the first home computer I had. I mean, I had a hand me down Atari VCS from an older brother. Yeah. But the, the Amstrad CPC 464 was the first home computer I had. Apparently, I got it when it first came out as well. And my brother saw about this new one coming out, and he wanted that one particularly. So that's the main reason I got it. So that was 84? Uh, yeah, 84, yes. yes uh, did you get right, it with yeah. the colour monitor or the green monitor? I, got, I did. I did get it with a colour monitor. Wow. The money, yeah. You were spoiled. Yes. Yes. Didn't you, um, did all your friends, did any of your friends have, have Amstrad's or were they all speccy? Uh, I had boys? one, Gavin Davis had a 6128, but he only had a green screen monitor for it. Oh, well, but he had that, that in 86 though. That was, that because that came later. Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's when he had his. Yeah, yeah. So, so I was the only one for a while. I think, I think I used to copy them from somebody. I used to have some copy games because my dad had a twin hi-fi and that and we copied tape to tape. Yeah, as long as you disable the stereo, you're okay. Yeah, well, we we never knew that, so it was a bit pretty much Russian roulette whether the game worked. Whether or they not. worked or uh, not. Yeah, yeah. I was I was talking to someone the other day about how the games copy, and if they, if, you, if you use stereo, generally they yeah, won't that was work. Me. That was me. It was you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, well, I, 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 were you on the stream? But I was speaking. To, who else was I speaking to? Is it Mark? I think it was. Yeah, I think it was. I think well, I might be Paul actually. Okay, is it, that's Yellow Belly, isn't it? OSG. Paul? oh okay oh one of them anyway um yeah because th that was um that was something i discovered because okay. um i was doing the amstrad double bill i mean i had an i had yeah. an amstrad tape tape to tape midi system oh and, lucky boy yeah well it was me brothers that was it was actually a brother my older brother's hand-me-down and oh, okay. um and i was trying to do i thought what hang on a minute it's a cassette i mean we could we record off the radio mm. we record tape to tape why not try Ooh. it with a game and none of them ever Can't worked <laughs> Ah, oh. I never ever worked. Um, no. I, think I, if you, if I, I think the only thing I learned is you turn the volume down to specific yeah. number that sort of did better. Yes, it's very volume specific on the recording. Yeah, yeah. I think it's like five or something. Four or five. Mine was the sweet spot. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I always remember. Uh, many, I remember many... copying uh, wrote, uh, uh, Jack the Nipper too. I always remember right. copying that. Yeah, because some of the, well, obviously some of the early games didn't have any copy protection, so no. But the later ones did, and when you the likes of Beep Load and and uh, 
and Firebird Loader and stuff like that coming in. Yeah. So get a bit tricky. So you had the Amstrad then, presumably, for the majority of the 80s, I'm guessing. I did, yes. Uh, my brother managed to blow it up because he wanted to know what would happen if you plugged a Master System power supply into it. So I, right. So we fried the bloody thing and we had to send it off to a repair shop. That one in Harrow. In, uh, in, Adam, Adam's World? Not Adam's World. No, it's uh, not. It's Worldstone. Uh, oh, was that the one uh, around the back of the old Royal Oak? Uh, I'm not sure. No, it's in the it's in the shops, row of shops. Uh, uh, oh, um, St Anne's Road. Yeah, it's by the it's sort of uh, down the on the same side as that car showroom, one big clock tower. Oh yes, oh yeah, uh, uh, that's yeah. It. yeah, that's where. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember it taking an entire month for them to repair it, and it felt like pure torture having to wait that long before yeah. you got it. That's, so yeah, it's, it's amazing to think that we were we didn't obviously we didn't know each other back then, but obviously we were a similar age, so. At the same yeah. time, we were probably in Harrow at the same time looking for games. Oh, we could have been. Uh, I don't think I ever recall going to Harrow for games. Uh, that was later on the Amiga and that with Adam's World and CEX. But yes. I, I used to go to Uxbridge and go to uh, John uh, know, John yeah. Menzies and stuff like that. And, yes. and Boots. And Boots. You could get games from Boots. Yeah, you then, could. Yeah, you? yeah, you could. Oh, I, mean, so, yeah, yeah. I was the opposite end of the town, so I, I went to Harrow a lot and uh, South yeah. Harrow as well. Oh, okay. And uh, Hayes. Yeah, I Hayes. Hayes. I used to go to a news agent in uh, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, Stanmore. St- yeah, Stanmore. Yeah, Stanmore. Yeah, Stanmore. Yeah, remember buying Gregory loses his clock from the <laughs> from there. I bought I bought my first Dizzy game from uh, a news agent in South Arrow. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I got think... mine from a my local one in High Street. Eric and Die. Eric and Guy. I remember that. Yes. One. Uh, no, mine was yeah. a. Uh, do you remember Aladdin's Cave in um, in South Harrow? No, no, it? I never really went to South Harrow because they had a they had an arcade up upstairs. And oh, okay, no, no, loads, I don't me. You know, loads of loads of kids used to go there, and they had like things like um, games. That, that I mean, that was the first time I ever saw Splatterhouse, for example. And oh, okay, it was like wow, they put that on an arcade game. Good grief, you know. It's quite shocking. It was the goriest thing you've ever seen. Yeah, as a kid, it's like pre Mortal Kombat and stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you hadn't seen anything like that before. And um, they used to sell games. And it, there was a Woolies next door. Oh okay. And it, I think I bought my copy of Treasure Island Dizzy from that Woolies. Oh okay. I used to buy mine from the Watford one. Yeah. What? Yeah. There was one in Watford, weren't there? Before uh, before yeah. the Harlequin. That was the biggest one in the country. That mm. one. Uh, I bought my first ever two Amstrad games from there, Feud and 180. Oh, great game. Yes. Great Apart game. from Feud, I used to scare the hell out of me as a kid. Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, yeah, great music, though. Yes. Really good music. But, but yeah, it used to scare me having your like, twin brother come on screen and that and kill you instantly and stuff like that. <laughs> yes. It used to freak me out. That's that the... and the Ghost in Sultan's Maze used to freak me out. Where Werewolves of London used to do that to me as well. Later on. Oh, okay. That, I quite that like that to... game. I quite oh, I, that. I like it, but it used to sort of like creep me out a bit. I had no idea what was going on. I used to wander around until I eventually died. Uh, you've so. got to like, got to kill your family members or something, isn't it? Yeah, you have to, yeah, and get the different crucifixes and that, but you can't kill policemen because that yeah. just turns them all against you. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah, that's actually fr- all the ch- chasing you all the time, going mental. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, good memories of the Amstrad there. So, what were your favourite games at the time? Uh, I'm trying to think really. I'm like, I loved uh, Rainbow Islands, but that would come later. Uh, uh 89, I think. Is that... Oh, okay. Well, some of the early ones, like Roland on the ropes and that, yeah. and Roland needs a kidney and stuff like that. And, uh, uh, Roland brushes his teeth and yeah, that stuff. <laughs> Roland goes seal clubbing. <laughs> uh, Roland okay. goes protesting. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I mostly used to pick up the budget games, to be honest. I used to, and then the compilation ones. Jack the Nipper and Jack the Nipper 2, I absolutely loved as a kid. I mean, I uh, didn't have... Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, yeah, you're probably like the same as me. You probably went for more budget stuff than like the full price stuff. Yeah, budget stuff and the compilation. So uh, 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 Rampage, I absolutely loved in the Amstrad. Great version. Um, yes, I mean, you, and it stole the music from Trojan. It does. It never it came out. So. Does st- does steal music. There's a few games that actually steal music from other other games though uh... yeah but i just found it confusing that trojan never come out on the amstrad elite apparently had their rights to it but they never released it there was a lot of weird ones like that though there was a lot of games like in mid-development that never got released 
hmm. for plenty of uh, platform. I remember your video about uh, Thundercats. Yes, which was, well, I had two um, of them. That was a, that was elite as well. Cause that, that was, was a, an interesting story because it was supposed to be um, uh, Ghosts and Goblins or something, wasn't it? Uh, Beyond the Ice Palace, he pitched it as a sequel to uh, Ghouls and Ghosts. So that's, that's why it's right. called Beyond the Ice Palace. Yes. And when that are rejected, he wanted to turn it into a Thundercats game. That's why the main character looks like Lion. A little of bit, yeah. Which is wavy, wavy yeah, hair. Yeah, he's got blonde hair and sort of different coloured pants on. But yeah, that was supposed to be one. And uh, Bomb Jack, Bomb Jack 2, two. Well, on the Commodore 64 was supposed to be a yeah. Thundercats game. And he even left the music in. Yeah, they, they so. did. Yeah, it actually plays the Thundercats music, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Which, that's weird because Bomb Jack 2 is actually a really good game. It is. It's, it's surprisingly good. So I don't know why... So obviously, I think basically I think he was cutting his hedges and trying to release uh, have uh, three games ready in time for Christmas. So whatever one finished pitch the post and that they could that was a, that was the Thundercats game. Yeah, but the, the result of it was that the, the, the Thundercats game was kind of a bit of a disappointment. It's it's not bad. Again, that was supposed to be a different game completely. I think it was some sort of samurai game originally. It's why he swings a sword such a weird way. Is that yeah? Is that the way the reason why it's sort of split? with that sort of like sip of scrolling at the top yeah mm. well that's, that's like their attempt to do parallax back then wasn't it was it? yes uh, yeah and so, uh yeah and it turns out that the other two games as a result of the old thundercat story was actually probably better beyond the ice palace i think is actually a great little game oh that that should have been the thundercats game i reckon yeah because that's probably definitely the best of the three in terms of being closest to thundercats well, as a standalone game, it's enjoyable anyway, so... Yeah, I'm and, just um, saying, thematically, that would make the best Thundercats game out of the three that they were developed. I and apparently when... he was he pitched it as a Nintendo game as well mm. for the NES, because they started making games for the NES Elite. Steve Wilcox, that's his name. I met him once. That would have been uh, interesting he... to see it on the yeah. NES. Yes. I think it would have... It would have been close to the Commodore 64 version, I reckon. It would have not... flickered a lot, I think. Yeah. Um... Especially with all them particle effects and stuff going on. Yeah. So, as long as it retained that music, because that's epic music on that. Absolutely. Really good. But I think I, I, it was a bloody tough game, though, Thundercats. It's, um, yeah, it is, it is, yeah. But, you know, they, 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 didn't, they didn't do too bad, I guess, uh, for the no. time. I mean, it's, it's a bit unfair to sort of, like, look back now and what, what, the Amstrad, what people have done with the Amstrad now. And you think, what? Oh, of course, it looks at that port of Toki somebody's making. It looks astounding. It is. I've I've got the demo of that. I've, oh, okay. I've got the first level demo, and yeah, it it's looks amazing. Incredible. Really good work. And it's so um, it's, it's amazing. That it is still stock Amstrad stuff in that. It's a shame that they've, these talented people weren't around back then, and we didn't have shit like Outrun. Yeah, well, that's true. I, th I think I think the thing is though, it takes a long time to tap into a system properly, doesn't it? Sometimes. Yeah, well, about 40 years, apparently. So mm. I didn't think it was that long, but yeah. No. yeah, yeah. are getting I mean, on for 40 years. So yeah, it's, well, it's 35 years, isn't it? Because it's... Well, 84. No, 84, so 30, 31 years. Yeah, something like that. But, you know... 36 when, years, yeah. You look at... Yeah, 36 years. You look at things like... Uh, one moment. Two, two great examples in the last decade, I would say, obviously. Pinball Dreams, outstanding. Yes. Um, if, you'd, if you'd have played that to me... And I think, or I think to anybody that had an Amstrad back in the day and said, that's on an Amstrad, you go, fuck off. Yeah, you said that's Amiga, isn't it? Yeah. Line of me. Or an ST. Yes. Well, S it's too colourful for an ST. Oh, yeah, but it sounds like an ST, you see. Oh, OK. Because the ST's got the same sound chip. <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. And then, of course, um, the remake of uh, R-Type. Yes. And there's a remake of Ghosts and Goblins, isn't there? There is two. Goblins done, yeah. There's oh, two. OK. Uh, there's one, they're both for, well, one of them's for the GX4000 and one of them's for the Plus machines, I think. Once, uh, what's his name in our group was doing a remake of Double Dragon? Uh, uh yes, name? there was. What's his name? He was doing it. I've got his name. Can't, it, it, it's gone out of my mind. Um, yeah. Yeah, there was one planned. Yeah. Um, but there was also, uh, like in development for like the last 10 years, it seems, uh, a Street Fighter 2 as well, but. Yeah, it doesn't seem to have materialised. But back, but going back to the games back in the day, what we had back then. Um, so Rainbow Islands, you like good, good, good arcade port. I thought it's very good. Yes, uh, a bit of slow down. But... A few things they, they've really hit the ball, knock, knock the ball out of the park with all ports. Really, even the, the NES version that was developed in the UK, that looks amazing. 
Yeah, I mean, even the, the Spectrum port stands up. It's very, very, very playable. Hmm. Um, it was one of those games where so, it, it's weird because when it comes to arcade ports, especially on the Amstrad, you, you're either going to get total tosh or you're going to get something that's pretty good. Yes. I mean, it's a site or a lazy Spectrum port. Or a lazy Spectrum port. But yeah. s- getting rid of the lazy Spectrum ports, you've either got one or the other, and one or one or t'other. Yeah. Um, so you you got the outruns of this world. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately. And uh, then you've got these Chase HQs of the world. Exactly. So, exactly. It's, yeah, completely. It just depends on the talent, really, of who's involved. Opposite ends of the of the spectrum, to, to want of a better pun. Yeah, basically, if Richard Applin made a game or not. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Or, if, you know, if David Whittaker was involved in yeah. making the music. <laughs> or just a couple of teenagers they've hired, uh, turned out to be crap, which, which was the story of why Double Dragon on the Amsterdam was crap, because yes. they literally hired some school kids. Yes, they did. Yes, they yeah. did. Yeah. Th- that was for one and two, I believe. Who was that? Uh, that was uh, Melbourne House. Melbourne House, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was that was for one, but also two suffered from being not very good either, but then mm. both were obviously redone by Mr. Applin. Yeah. Um, and he went on to do uh, Final Fight as well, didn't he? So I did the graphics for Final Fight for sure. Um, the, thing, the thing about Final Fight is it's that 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 that, it, that that goes into one of my really frustrating games on the Amstrad, I think, um, mm-hmm. because it looks lovely and it's very yeah, ambitious. Yeah, it from screenshots, so it's absolutely stunning. Yes, I it mean did. it looks like sort of a compressed version of the arcade game. It, it's it's a deceptive looking game, should we say? Yeah. Um, yeah, because the problem, once it starts moving, it's okay. Oh, yeah, that really stuttery sort of Amstrad yeah. thing. Uh, I mean, we're, we're not... The thing is, you used to tolerate that, didn't you? So, oh, that's, that's fine, that's how it works, and that. I well, yeah, well... I'm playing the arcade game. It's like being in an arcade. This is playing a game at five frames a second. Certainly is. Certainly, but but then again, have you had it alongside... If, if, if you had like that on your library... Lego. Eh? Pardon? I said it looks like it's made out of Lego. It does. It, oh, I think it works. I think it was. Yeah. I mean, look, giant sprites on it. I mean, for yeah, the time. Yeah, massive sprite. Yeah. But if you had that in your library and you had sandwich, if it was sandwiched between two other arcade ports, Cisco Heat. <laughs> oh, yeah. And That's Pit a shame, that was quite a, that was a great concept for a game. It's just, I don't know why they asked it up so much. Because well, that should have been, and that should have been the next Chase HQ. That should have been. It should have been, but even the arcade was gash. Let's yeah. Be, let's be honest. I mean, you're making a port out of a, out of a crap arcade game in the first place. So, hmm. uh, yeah, but some people, some people sort of uh, enhance the arcade original. I mean, look, look at Midnight Resistance. The Ar- Amstrad yes. version's probably better than the arcade version, I'd say. Yeah, well, I agree. I, I think, if, yeah, j- just jump into a different system quickly, I think um, UN Squadron is a good example of that. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know, you've played UN Squadron on the Super Nintendo? I, I briefly, I'm not into shoot ups really, but I have played it yeah. at some I, point in my life i think i think and i think a lot of people would would agree that it's actually superior to the arcade original so hmm. um which is interesting for the super nintendo because it couldn't really do shoot much that well no um so hey ho digress so i what did you, uh, seen better arcade ports at home in the arcade the original and stuff like that yeah yeah it, it's it depends on what, what what it was really and who was at the helm i guess yeah um I think another example would be um, Shinobi. Is that? I mean, yeah, that was quite good. That pretty was good. Really good. Zaplin, Zaplin again, isn't it? <clears throat> yes, of course. Um, and it's got really good music again. Hmm. Good stuff. And uh, Renegade. Have you ever read these diary reports and hidden in the game's code as well? Yeah, they are. They're, they're just like sweary notes or something, isn't it? Yeah, they're like a mile long. I think the reason why uh, Final Fight is on two discs. Uh, on the Amiga, solely because he wrote a really, really long lit you know, rant in, in the code. Otherwise, it'd have been a one disc game. <laughs> so most of it is just hidden code. Yeah, it's just him ranting about going on, uh, going to a game expo and that, and not liking it there and stuff like that. Well, you got events somehow. I mean, we yeah, didn't have social media. Like Sega is, yeah, it's, it's just fun though. That the reason why it's on two discs is solely because he inserted a diary in there. So. I like I like I like the fact that we even now we're we're like uncovering like things hidden in games from years ago. Oh yes, it's amazing. It's, like, oh, it's basically like video game archaeology, really, isn't it? So. 
Yeah, yeah, it's it's quite fascinating, and we can go back to like all the like the Amstrad, the Spectrum, the Commodore, and everything. So, mm. it, I think it's exciting when somebody digs out an unreleased game or cancelled game. I think as it's well, probably the reason why you know talking about the the eight bits and the sixteen bits, especially as well, is because there's a lot of um, stuff that went on back then. It's still so, so, still so many stories to tell and uncover. Mm. Um, the saddest thing is we need to sort of get onto it as soon as possible because a lot of people are forgetting them and well dying. Yeah, so. yeah, you're about to start, yeah, unfortunately passing away. Cause yeah, because like, yeah, I mean when I done that Thundercats video, uh, I had to tell Steve Wilcox the events because he'd forgotten them. Yeah, as well stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Time is a uh, time is an evil bastard sometimes. Yes. Um, oh yeah, that's why you need to drop them down before you know save it for the future of humanity. Yeah, we're well. well, well See, hats off to so, you know, hats off to people like Zypho for you know convincing Roland Perry to do that interview because yes, fascinating stuff. Yeah, well done. You managed to find some information to blackmail him on. Yeah, yeah. I know, well, I know where you live. We got to get got to get sugar on it yeah, because he doesn't like talking yeah. about the Amstrad. <laughs> no, but he likes getting praised for it. I think somebody on uh, uh, the Apprentice said the whole sole reason uh, he joined, uh, he got into computers because of the Amstrad, and he told him that, and he said, "Oh, thank you." Yeah. Oh, he, he, he certainly likes the praises for his good stuff. Yeah, of course. I mean, I I like the Amstrad. I love the Amstrad. It was good for me as a child. I'm glad I had one. I'd it, love to have a sit that. down with him though, and, and I'm, I'm sort of probably better if you yourself did it or something, and talk about the Amstrad and, and the progression into of the Plus series and the GX4000, which we both had. Yeah. Yes, and, we did. Yes, I had uh, loads of them because they kept blowing up. Well, yeah, I've got two still. <clears throat> oh, okay. Which are not blown up. <laughs> Oh, nice. I've changed the power supply, that's why. Yeah, so uh, Chinny Vision's always going on about that, or you've got to change the power well, supply. Well, it is bad. Blow up the entire house. Yes, well, it is a bad power supply. everyone in a three-mile radius if you keep using it, yeah. I think it's because the amperage rating... I don't, I don't want to get too technical here, I don't want to bore people, but um, I think it's because the amperage rating for the packaged power supply is actually not uh, good enough to um, sort of power the modulator. I heard it's increasing over time. Yes, the wattage is increasing over time, and that's what's frying them. That could be, and uh, yes, because it's not a stable block. No, yeah. So you get a a, a proper, you know, R, RF block or something, and you, you're good mm. to go. So yeah, that's luckily, yeah. Or, or you just use the monitor. or use monitor the original or monitor. monitor. Yeah, yeah. You, you're good with the original monitor. It's strange because the old the old machines, of course, they have a little bit of tolerance in them. Um, yes, yeah, weird, isn't it? Unless you plug a master system control uh, plug power yes. supply into it. Yeah. <laughs> That's my brother there for you. Curious to wonder what would happen. Yeah, well, he knew the answer. Mm. So, yeah, because your GX4000 got blown up by a copy of Robocop 2, I believe. Yeah, several of them. Yeah, I kept, uh, basically, I didn't buy a GX4000 until they dropped about £40 in price. Right, and so I bought, that's summer 91 or something. Yeah, so I, bought, so I bought one with a copy of Robocop 2, and I had this copy that just went around destroying GX4000s for some reason. Every time you plugged it in, it would fry it. But the game uh, survived. Uh, the game survived. This game was fine, but it kept blowing it up. I don't know if you saw my tweet the other day because you know, Julian Rignall was speaking to me about it. From yeah, coincidentally, uh, basically, yeah, I bought I bought one, put, plugged it in, it fried it. Oh no, there must be something wrong with it. Took it back, bought another one from uh, Dixon's. It yeah, fried it, coming back, bought another one, fried, took it back. So I brought the game back. I said, "Oh, you know, why you keep bringing them back? What are you doing to keep frying them and stuff?" And I said, "It must be this game or something." So they tested it on their display unit, and it fried that one as well. <laughs> so so uh, in the in the end, my mum said, "Oh, you're not having one anymore. Fuck it. You know, give, get your money back." And that. So I so I got my money back on the game and the console. So somewhere out there in the ether, my copy of Robocop Two that kills consoles is still out there. Hopefully, it's dead. Because that's yes. got a serious uh, um, problem on its board. Yes. <laughs> or a faulty chip that's been, been put in backwards or something. I don't know. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully it's been destroyed or something. But yeah, it might be out there. You never know. I would yeah. hope so. I would hope so. My my first my first GX4000 was fried by the power supply. Um, oh, okay. How long overuse. did you have it for? Eh? And when, what, what sort of era was this? I mean, did you get it as a child? And no, I, I got mine on release. Oh, okay. Uh, because, Ooh. yeah, because I... I queued um, up outside Dixon's for midnight launch. I was. No, oh, it would have been. It would have been in in, in in this era. But no, back in the day, it was... Uh, I Obviously, we you read Amstrad Action, I guess. Yeah. So it was that yeah, cover, no, was... that famous cover, I think issue 60, maybe, I think it is, 
um, which said on the front, simply stunning. Yes. And the picture of the Year 2000 in very dramatic sound like lighting. George Cropper there. Eh? You sound like George Cropper there. Oh, did I? I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. do apologise. Oh, <laughs> you like a bastard. I'll, I'll turn a few viewers off if I'm sounding like that. Um, yeah, so uh, that picture of the Jigsaw Thousand in very dramatic lighting. Very moody. Yes. Yes. And uh, gave the full rundown of its specs and how it's going to be much better than the Master System and it's all really better than the NES. Mm. Mm, fantastic on paper. Great. Um, well, we, we will forget about the Mega Drive coming out, obviously. Yeah, but... yeah, they didn't mention that. Um, I mean, the Mega Drive was already out in Japan. Yes. Um, and it came to our shores, I think, six months after the official release of the Jigsaw Thousand. Hmm. Um, but, yeah, uh, I think interviews have been said and done and about it wasn't supposed to be a rival to that anyway. It was supposed so, to sort of Was work. it supposed to be like a budget games console? Was yeah, that so intended? it's a kind of... Do you remember... Like, so, so so it's basically like... I always, I always put it akin to when Commodore... So Commodore released the 64 first, but then they released the 16 after, didn't they? Yes. As a cut-down version. Yeah, budget version, yeah. So I always think about it like that. It's kind of like we're, we're trying to mop up the um, mop up the eight bit market coming out of uh, coming out of the micro era, uh, yeah. going into the console era, and and ain't Amstrad that only tried that because Commodore themselves and Atari tried that as well. What a C sixty four GS? Yes, well, that, was, that was just a Commodore sixty four without keyboard. Yes, literally. But it was so. a consoleized version of the C sixty four, which yeah. made several games unplayable. Yes, mm. like Terminator Two, which is supposed to be the packing game, and of course Atari did the XEGS as well. Yes. Well, that so thing they... with the pastel buttons, wasn't it? Yes, Different... cool looking. Yeah, yeah. I just remember, I remember staring at it in an Argos catalogue and going, "Oh, I really want one." Mm. Never did, but I but still haven't got one actually. Essentially, both their machines were just consoleized versions of their computers, but the GX obviously wasn't. It was a little bit more. Yeah, so, that was a plus, wasn't it? It was a plus machine. It was. It could do things that the CPC couldn't couldn't do, which is you know proven like, now in homebrew stuff. Yeah, um, I'm surprised they didn't bring out a kit to play it on the cpc though like a cartridge port with the enhanced chip inside or something there's maybe i, th I think there was um a difference in the way it was sort of like geared up inside oh okay so i, think I also that... had a uh, you had to put in a cartridge for the bios as well didn't you on the so plus machine you did yes yeah. yes because yeah you, yeah it would it would when you boot it up you would need the um you need the rom bios uh to run yeah, basic. You need to put burning rubber in it at all times mm. And then we would load the yeah, we'd load in load in basic and uh Yeah, basically if you didn't have that cartridge you'd have a giant paperweight. Exactly, it wouldn't do nothing. Oh, yeah. And of course That's it was stupid really, you think you'd have some sort of bog standard BIOS on them. And of course the inspirations itself. for its design were taken from the Amiga and the ST. Yeah, it did look very Amiga ish. Mm. Of course they were really sort of strong at that point anyway, them two. Mm. Especially the Amiga. Well, they went off and done their own console, didn't they? And it died on its ass twice. Oh, the CD t CD32. Yeah, and the, and the CDTV. And the CDTV, yes. Well, that was trying to go for the upmarket thing before the internet. They wanted to... It's like, you know, have an entire encyclopedia on a CD. Isn't that what everybody wants in their home? And the answer was no. No. Because yes. nobody wanted to pay 700 quid for the privilege. They just buy a book. I remember that, I remember that being showcased on Bad Influence. Um, vividly remember that episode um, fawning yeah. over the CD32 um, yeah I always saying, made, wasn't they showing off uh, Pictionary and that, that oh they were saying how amazing it's going to be yeah because um, uh, yeah, there was a rivalry between that and the CDI wasn't there oh the CDI that was another well <laughs> that's another story isn't it yeah With, uh, the, that was that's part of the old uh, Sony Nintendo PlayStation debacle it was yes yeah so it's the sort of genesis of the PlayStation the CDI in a way sort of connected uh, to it yeah that's that is that's when they stabbed sony in the back and they said well we're going with philips yeah they're half-assed yeah. underpowered console <laughs> worked out well yeah as we know so uh they were well, so we got, did you go on classics to like hotel mario and oh they got, they got the video clips of zelda they? yeah yeah that's right my boy god we try to forget these nightmares sometimes oh, it's a, that's, a, that's the funniest part about gaming isn't it all the anecdotes and stuff oh. like that and the, the wrong turns and that that's the best part talking about them it certainly is certainly so i made an entire career out of it so i've done well out of it so did, oh, you certainly have did you go on to the 16-bit micros then after the amstrad i had an amiga 600 right uh 
and I had that for a while. I got that cartoon pack with it, uh, one with Colin Curley on the cover, because you know all the kids, every, all the cunts want a Lenny Henry voice cartoon dog that advertises corn crisps. Yeah, that's that's, um, a, that, that's genius appealing. marketing. Yeah. That's so cool. yes, uh, so I went on to an Amiga six hundred after that. I also, well, I, I had consoles. I had the Mega Drive and the Super Nintendo. Yeah, I think a lot and... of people did that though, didn't they? They in that sort of nineties period, they were still hanging on to the micros, but they also the consoles yeah. were starting to invade, and we went on to the micros. Bit, yeah. Mm. So what was what was the first? So you obviously you said you had a VCS, but what was the first console you had a uh, along either alongside the Amstrad or after the Amstrad? Well, that would be in the Master System. Mm. I had that for years and years until the Mega Drive came out, and I loved the Master System. It's probably it's, my favourite no. console as a kid. It is a great system. Mm. It's a great system. Some really really good games on there. Mm. as well i think the only thing i'm I'm regretting was seeing a a nintendo entertainment system that had ninja turtles with it and that and that's the only game i really got oh and wwf as well that's the only ones i got jealous about i managed to buy one years later second hand from a kid at school but yeah because i never i never played on the on the nintendo for years i mean yeah friends of mine had master systems and game it was a rich kid's toy that was sorry that was a rich kid's toy yeah, it was. Wasn't really? It? It because be. I remember going into like department stores like Debenhams and that, and they wanted seventy-five quid for Fester's Quest. I was like, oh, God, oh, the games were yeah, they were so expensive, weren't they? Yeah, so one hundred forty quid by today's standards. I was like, playing that. Yeah, so, and yeah, then, of course, Mega Drive came along, and the Mega Drive was some in some, some the games were some instances cheaper than an NES. Yeah, well, that was about thirty-five quid at the time, wasn't it? Mega Drive games, yeah, and sort of that sweet spot. And even import gaming was around that price as well, unless it was Street Fighter. Then what, hundred quid for it? But... Well, yeah, I got. Uh, that's another thing I got on release was uh, Street Fighter Two on the day of release for the Super Nintendo version. Oh, you had to. That was a, only the cool kids had it at launch. Yeah. Sixty-five pounds. My father paid for uh, that. Uh, Gold. Take out a second mortgage for that. Yeah. God. Well, I think I had. A, I bought an American copy from Wembley Market. That's what I got. Oh yeah, I, I did go I'll, around Wembley Market as well. I think I think I'll pay about six. That stall was right by a CX. Did you know? What? Oh, was, was it? I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. I only found that later. Yeah, and uh, Jer- uh what's his name? Uh, Charlie Brooker uh, used to run it sometimes as well. Oh, because you was, did. Uh, um, yeah, you did some something. work with Charlie Brooker, didn't you? Uh, a couple of times. Yeah, I, I sort of provide information on gaming history and stuff like that, and props and stuff. Mm. He also retweeted my video about Jeremy Clarkson as well years ago. Because <laughs> I don't think he likes Jeremy Clarkson, but yeah. <laughs> well, he's a polarising figure. He yeah. is. I like him, though. Especially, especially if you're Irish. Yes. So, yeah. Or Mexican. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, or uh, Chinese. Fe- sorry? Or Chinese. Or Basically, Chinese. if you have well, any other yeah, race you know. or sexual orientation that isn't his. Basically, yeah. Oh, no. He's, I, don't, I think it's all in good jest. But um, yeah. Yeah, so so people that are listening that don't know who Charlie Brooker is, so he's the man responsible for essentially Black Mirror. Yes. So that's probably his most famous work, I want to guess. I'd imagine so, I'd yes. say Black Mirror. Um, yes. Which is a very sort of a Twin Peaks kind of thing going on with that. Yeah. So, uh, mm-hmm. right. Oh, okay. So that's, that's, that's actually another, another celebrity that you've touched then. Yes. Emotionally, emotionally, no, and, scarred. I'd like to just call it yeah. scarred. Yes, yeah, you've <laughs> fainted. So, what was it? So, I guess the so the Amstrad was like bought for you, it wasn't it? Wasn't a gift, was it? Yeah, no, my parents got that for me. So it was a gift. Yeah, it'll help you with your homework. So, yeah, of course it was. Not for the games at all. No, no. We bought it to help with your homework. <laughs> you had Easy <laughs> Am's word then. Yeah. Yes, and that animal vegetable mineral. Um, Mini office too. I think oh, I bought that years later from a scout's jumble sale, and I had no idea what it was. It's was brilliant, actually, for an office oh. piece of software. Yeah, um, I mean, obviously massively dated now, but yeah, I actually used to mess around with it quite a lot um, for my school work. I didn't have a printer, so I couldn't print anything. So it was kind of useless in that sense. But yeah. Would have been the old dot matrix printer, of course, back then. Oh yeah, nee, 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 nee. yeah. And don't don't touch the reed head, otherwise you burn your fingers. Oh yes. Well, I, I had the uh, I had uh, I bought the spectrum printer, and that just ran off burning paper as well. The smell of it 
yes. turning the spectrum well, colours that, that silver paper as well, that like silver nitrate paper that it just burnt on. So you couldn't even burn it onto normal paper. Yes. Because <laughs> I, I wonder what would happen if you, if you insert the loo roll into it. <laughs> it caught fire. So... Uh, only you would do that, wouldn't you? Yeah, well, it's just, I'm just curious about experiments. Cute, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll write my thesis on a loo roll. <laughs> <laughs> Your anus horribilis on a loo roll. Yes. Yes. Why not? Why not? It has to be a pink one, of course. Oh, what? Well, oh, uh, yeah, well, I don't think we ever had pink. <laughs> I think well, we are more of a white loo roll family. Uh, we are blue a lot for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, okay. Not that like cheap, horrible stuff that sort of rubs like sandpaper on oh, your ass. Oh, gr- oh, the green school paper. paper. Yeah, yeah, we had that at school. Well, you trace it right your ass on tracing paper, wasn't it? Like, yeah. Well, we went to rival schools, I think, didn't we? Um, Possibly. Was it Northwood, you went to. I went to Northwood. Yeah. Yeah, and I went to Rookseath. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, it was there were rival schools at the time. So, Ooh. yeah. It was North North North, North Alt was um, my school's uh, primary target. <laughs> oh, I think uh, uh, Hen- uh, Hayden was ours. I think mostly. Yeah, it probably would have been, wouldn't it? Yeah, because that's just up the road. Yeah, yeah. Most of our friends just went to Hayden, so we didn't care anymore. Mm. So. Yeah, because when I was doing my bus driving, that was one of my stops, Hayden School. Mm-hmm. So that was that was fun doing that. <clears throat> Great excursion. Oh God, terrible. So, 16 bits, went on to that. So, consoles, going into yes. consoles, going into the 90s. Was it was it PlayStation then for you? Uh, well, it, it would have been. I had a, I remember buying a Saturn because uh, I bought an HP because it was so expensive from Game in Watford. Uh, and unfortunately, my dad forgot his credit card, so we had to go all the way home and then go back in that so i remember getting frustrated about that but yeah but the playstation i bought with my own money because i got a job working in future uh electronics boutique in uxbridge yes i remember that as it was called yeah eb yes eb but yeah they were future zone for a while because there's one in watford one in ricelip and they had a vr machine in their virtual reality i remember going to the one in watford certainly yeah oh okay and the one yeah, in Watford was, was actually on the. It wasn't in the. Wasn't in the complex. It was on the high street, wasn't it? Near, it near McDonald's. Have, yes, there was one on the street, and there was one in in the te- in the yes. Harlequin. Yes, and of course, yeah. game game was there as well. Yes, for a while, which you did yes. some work for, I believe. I, I, well, I did for, more for Gameplay.co.uk, right? Uh, which is their sort of discount vert shop, but quite popular in that. And I used to do uh, pre-order incentive videos for that now it's quite good money that was i used to get like 250 quid a video for doing wow. that and a free game so, so that was a nice money for me back then a bit of promo stuff for, for yeah that, game. Was, that, was really, that was far more money i didn't get on youtube and stuff like that back then so that was my focus and that and i just stuck them on youtube afterwards it's amazing how dip. your entire career has always been in that interest isn't it and i I, th- I think you should feel quite blessed in that sense i sort of fell into it really i think it's sort of a trying to get out of it I, mean, I do want to do more creative stuff and stuff like that i want to do into animation and stuff like that but youtube doesn't like people who make animations because they spend so long making a video unless yeah. you're pumping out 10 videos every nanosecond they don't really like you unfortunately there's a really funny animated um uh channel that i watch uh cannot think of them off the top of my head but they do very very clever parody american uh subject Oh yeah. Um, oh, I can't remember. They have a they have a sort of um, a style to it where it's all like very very sarcastic, which is interesting for an American sense of humour. Um, mm. To have that kind of thing, and they t- they t- take the piss out of all these news figures, political figures all over America, and it's kind of really funny. Oh right. When they do it, I can't, I can't remember. It's not, it's a, oh, Freedom tunes. Awesome. Freedom tunes. Oh okay. No, That's I it. Freedom tunes. Yeah, really funny, really funny channel. Oh. So. Um, Wow, so so the, the old uh, the old gaming was PlayStation. You so you got the PlayStation. What did you what, what did you feel like out, out you know the step up into 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 the uh, CD ROM era then? Well, I I had a Mega CD, so I've been had a CD based systems for quite a while. Yeah. So yeah, no, I I I, I quite liked them. I mean, but, I was disappointed that you couldn't pirate them for a while because like. CD burners like cost half a million pounds back then until they sort of got a cheapo. Yeah. 
I think by the PlayStation they were cheap enough because I remember going into Blockbusters and copying games from them. I think it was the the 3D technology married with the CD technology, though, wasn't it? That really yeah. took, took it off. Hmm. And then, of course, uh, we move on to something like the PlayStation 2, which is... Uh, did you ever have one of those? I did, yeah. I pre-ordered it. Watford in, uh, Dixon's in Watford. Excellent. And the bloke called me uh, crazy for not taking out a warranty on it, and I almost punched him because it pissed me so much. How long did it last you? Uh, a uh, couple of that one lost me a couple of years, but I had to trade it in. I swap it over for one that worked. Oh, yeah. cool. I broke the joypad by dropping a sofa on it. As you do. So I could, yeah. But <laughs> yeah, I had that for a long time. I love the PlayStation 2. But then again, the first game I ever played on it was uh, Driver 2, and that was a PlayStation 1 game. So. Yes, because it was backward compatible, of course. Um, it was, yes. Yeah. First the days was Sony Light backwards compatibility. Well, yes, they well until they got to the playstation 3 yeah and then things sort of went a bit funny but... well apparently playstation 5 is going to be playstation 4 compatible yeah that but... would make sense it would make sense what they really should do is make it complete backward compatible for everything but that's probably very tricky to do well it's just emulation isn't it i yeah, mean the playstation would... 1 so basic by today's standards they could easily do emulation. well yes i mean and playstation 2 there's no reason why you couldn't put like a psx emulator on it no, of course not. Um, and run it under a shell or something. I mean, so. the PlayStation 3's uh, emulation for the PAL version is all emulation. It's not anything hardware-based. Mm. But only certain PlayStation 3 models can do that, though. That's the thing. Yes, that's yeah. true. Yeah, only the ba basically the 60 gigabyte models The early can. versions, I think, was a... Yeah, yeah, a launch model you can, yeah. The launch model, later. that's right, yeah. But, um, they were sort of... I don't know, Sony went for a bit of a funny period when it went to PlayStation 3. I, I fell out of gaming at that point um oh, yeah yeah after the playstation 2 i sort of fell away from gaming and um oh, so I, what were you doing at the time i don't know why i mean i i don't know why i did I, I i've spoken about this quite a bit on my channel now and then and i i think it was because i was i was moving away from home and i was doing a lot of different bits and pieces and drinking probably a lot <laughs> yeah um and just completely fell away from the scene um and during that period, obviously, my father decided to sell my original Amstrad. Oh, um, because that was me. That was mothballed uh, in a loft. Hadn't been touched for oh. years. And uh, I discovered that it had been sold. I went, oh, okay. All right, well, that, there you go. Where's my money? I guess. Um, well, it was me and my brothers anyway, so, you know, oh, okay. I couldn't quibble too much. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, I, and then I think it was... To be honest, it was kind of watching YouTube and getting into YouTube that started my gaming back up, in a way. Um, okay. Because we're coming on to sort of the tail end of the Wii. That was when it was. So oh, okay. The, so, yeah, but beginning of the Wii U then, is it? That's yeah. That's quite recent, about, Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like Ten years then, you've been back. Uh, yeah, I'd say about eight years out of gaming, I was. Okay. So, totally missed the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360 era, completely. Mm. Um, so I didn't do nothing about them or anything and then obviously got back into it and then the, the PS4 came out got that obviously got all, had a Wii U and uh, got back going and then sort of re-energised the sort of get back into the Amstrad because that was the machine and um, mm. they, 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 that, but that's, this is not about me what am I talking about I'm talking about you ah, yeah, <laughs> who we're interviewing here he's very clever so you turned me, it around it's my there podcast now. so uh, tell me about yourself <laughs> you're skillful you are you turn yeah. it around on me yeah i'm very lazy i just get people to talk about themselves yeah but you've got much more interesting stories than me well i have really just you have you have oh, okay. well you probably heard half your own half the i've time never met before. violet berlin i've met her a couple of times i know you have <laughs> yeah oh going back yeah, what was the it. um i've got to ask you what was the experience with uh digitizer it was fun. Uh, which mean? What do you mean? Digitizer, the original week-long show. Yes, we did, no, the, the, the YouTube series that you did. With, oh, that uh, was great fun. That was, it was yeah. absolutely knackering. Absolutely knackering. I had to have the day off for one of it in the middle of the week. But yeah, that was fun. I love that. It in was... fact, we had we had so much fun that everybody was in tears on the final day because it had all finished. Yeah. So yeah, so that was that's how you know sad it, it got in the end. But yeah, we loved it. It did come across like that um that everyone was sort of like emotionally involved in it at the end yeah so 
And uh, you bravely well, the very did last that. Thing was, we filmed was me being sick into a bucket. That was the last thing that that oh, we filmed. Well, I, I remember the the famous then, oh the one of you in the I don't know what you were wearing, but <laughs> not much, not long. Not much. Yeah. Um, and was it was it Octavius Kitten smacking you up the ass? Was it? I can't remember. Oh yes, yes, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. She climbed all over me in that. Yeah, it's that, funny. That was yeah. I was on the floor in tears. That one oh. was just. Um, hats off for doing that yeah I had to, well basically that story was um ganon was dressed up as a baby and stuff like that and uh it was going to be cut short and that was going to be the end of the episode of highlight was ganon just as a baby smashing things up so we sort of said oh can we be on and he said yeah well, we ain't got any props here and he said have a look in that there's a lot of box full of old stuff in that because a lot of the stuff in that box was from his um found footage series and that we found that thing in the hat and the face and the mask and actually found a police uniform and that so we put them on so basically it's just out of necessity for only like two minutes to find something to put on so uh, we just uh, grabbed them and essentially just dicked around and yeah we did it was just a, just a riot really it kind of worked didn't it yeah you just pissed it out and i bloody smashed up my knee falling on the floor though i was, I was like 28 stone in that and just fall dropping straight on the floor on my concrete I really messed up my knee for months but yeah Ouch. i'm all right now i remember yeah, you now, actually yeah. um yeah, I remember you messaged. I remember. I think we were we were talking at the time. I think you messaged me about that about you and your knee was screwed or something. Sure. You yes, did. that could have been that. Yeah, yeah. I fell on that. I fell on my knee and it hurt like hell. Yeah. Ouch! Ouch! Well, the, the, so, you yes. suffer for your art then. I do. Yeah, you know, it's just funny. I just love falling about and smashing things up. And that it's <laughs> worth. I think it's worth the injuries for just pissing about. The en the entertainment value. Yeah, I mean, everybody got a laugh out of it. That's the main thing. I think we did. I, th I think we did. Yeah, I think I, I didn't catch the live thing that they did in Hatch End. Um, no, that was that was last year. That was good. Yeah, yeah, that I was I knackering didn't... as well because we had to do all what we did in the show in in two hours, basically condense it into two hours. Mm. Do you think something like that would be done again? Or I have no idea. I have no idea what his plans are for the future. Unfortunately. Mm. this is mr biffo we're talking about here of course yeah yeah he changes at a whim he does so i have no idea what's in his head at the moment so. yeah i did i did pitch an idea if he ever did a second series i did pitch an idea that i could do a bit on the gx and do, do some banter with you about it but oh, yeah i thought that'd be, that'd a, be quite, nice a fun Aww. thing to do but uh Aww. well we were going to be doing destruction derby for will if we had the money and that and mm. we're going to have like do banger racing and smash each other up that that would be epic yes mm. so modern gaming then uh are you into that oh i mean obviously yeah I, I... actually i love modern gaming i've been mm. playing uh uh ghost of tsushima mm. quite a bit lately yeah is that um so is this console or pc what are you into uh i'm playing that on the playstation 4 right so i mean i mean to i prefer console gaming i know it's not as good as pc but I like just playing, sitting it on front of a telly and that, and mm. this, all the little faffing around and stuff like that with it. Yes. But I do like, I still still play PC gaming and that. Yes, it's something that hasn't changed with PC gaming. It's the thing about, yes, you get a good quality when it comes to PC gaming, but there is a lot of faffing around. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I've then always... again, modern consoles are turning into PCs and that, always bloody updates and that. Oh, you can't play this game, got to wait for an hour long update patch. Yeah. I just yeah. want to play the bloody game. Yeah. Can't I just play while it's updating? No, you can't. No, it's got to update. Especially when it's updating something like that's not related to the game. That's yeah. really irritating. It's just some tiny little background thing they want changed. Yeah, mine was, I think my PlayStation 4 decided that it wanted to update BT Sport. And I was like, okay, I don't want you to do that. I just want to play I, the game. Oh, <laughs> I don't even have BT Sport and it's still updating. Yeah, exactly. Because it's forced onto it. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think there was a forced up, like a forced update. They do that a lot, though, don't they? Force updates. No. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I wish the worst thing is I wish they'd do it while the machines on standby switched off or something. I'm sure. I'm pretty sure. I don't want to be presumptuous here, but I'm pretty sure the Wii U does that, or the Switch does that. It, it does. Well, it's supposed to do it, but it doesn't. It but, doesn't half the time. So you can play the game. Oh, well, you know, all my friends are kind of jump on at eight o'clock and let's play a game together. Oh, no, one of us has got to do an update because it didn't work. He didn't do it when it was offline. And like, oh, yeah, fuck. You know, so either if we all got to wait around for his, my friend to finish updating or play without him and feel like, if, you know, we skanked him. So, it's, yeah, I hate stuff like that. I think I think the idea is sound. I think the idea is sound. Because as many a time I've been, I've been sitting, I mean, my PC is like back to, back to where my modern consoles are. 
and yeah. I'll just it'll be like something like midnight. I'll be doing an edit or something like that, and all of a sudden, vroom, yes, and I'll turn around, a fan like, going what? off in the middle of the night. Vroom. Yeah, well, bloody what's that? I turn around and it's the Wii U that's come to life, and it's it's never the PlayStation Four that does it. It's always the Wii U that comes to life on its own, does something with its you know yellow light blinking. Yes, that's right. Yeah, um, in the original Wii, somebody sent you a message. You just hear this bling, yeah, and then and then you see this bloody light flashing in the middle of the night. Yeah, flash, flash. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, what's it doing? Yeah, well done. Give me a give me an epileptic fit in the darkness. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm freaking me out. What's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> Making the well, that's bloody... really scary. You just hear this random noise in the middle of the night. You know. Oh yeah, especially when when you get like a oh I had a, I had a re I think I had a redo on the playstation 4 it, it did a dreamcast impression and started moving across the desk another dreamcaster could do that could get grow legs and walk off yeah on its side did you ever oh, have dreamcast i did i had about i've got loads of the bloody things i keep i fried the first one by plugging it into a uk power source because of the japanese one i wonder what would happen and it means i didn't have a dreamcast anymore so i my i bought one at launch and parcel force nicked it so i had to wait a month <laughs> Uh, to prove that it wasn't coming, even though I knew it wasn't going to come, and uh, I had to buy, you know, got another one. So you have this talent, it seems, for frying games machines. Frying games machines, yes, yeah. or getting them stolen or covered so in shit. An um, Amstrad action, so it's an Amstrad CPC fried that GX four thousand <laughs> fried three of them, and f yeah, and and fried a Dreamcast as well. Yes, excellent. Anything oh, I, else? I fried quite a few. Uh, I've quite fried quite a few super nintendos but they're so easy to replace a fuse on them so they are yes yes i've yeah. still got my original super nintendo never fried it never blown a fuse oh, okay i had a super wild card and i got i played secret of mine once and i got so pissed off i pulled it out when it switched on and blew the thing oh up. yeah you can't do that yes no i know that now yeah. but yeah i did hear the power version of sonic one's quite easy to fry as well and a lot of people were blanking them the room chips and that you could blank them quite easily right okay this is on obviously the mega drive yeah yes yes yeah cool. did you see that um speaking of sonic did you see that uh teaser of the uh, sonic on the gx4000 uh mm, yes i did it so the master system version isn't it They're it, it looks over. very similar to the master system version yes mm. i think that would be um interesting if that's ever finished yeah that'd be quite nice it's got a completely different level design as well so Oh, it would technically be a different game. Is it based on any of the Sonic Master System it's games at all? Or based around different? the first game, more likely the Game Gear version. Um, but uh, if you look at the the, the world, well, I did a comparison video on on it uh, with the three other versions, and um, you can see what they've done. They've they've zoomed in on it to get more yeah. more visuals in your face because with, oh, the okay. Master, with the Master System version, obviously it's it's quite far out, isn't it? yeah um and sonic is quite small so with the gx what they've done is they've zoomed in on it quite closely but the level design is completely different completely different so yeah uh probably because you can't do all that spinny stuff that you can do on the mega drive and so it's a work yeah. in progress hmm. so another another you know like all the machines nowadays i've spoken about this i spoke about this with um obviously retro and limb on the last ams cast it's yeah. amazing that these machines are still getting so much focus with homebrews and stuff and sort of pulling out the stops of what these machines are capable of doing. It is, yes. It's amazing what they can tap out of it. Stuff with bulk standard hardware as well. They don't have to put any sort of G uh, 32X type accelerating hardware or anything. Yeah. Yeah, because it's easy to do that with something like an Amiga, of course. Yeah. Um, but with a with an old 8-bit, it's like, how, how far can we push this? And uh hmm. You get some amazing mega results. Games. Yeah, old mega games on the Spectrum and stuff like that. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Did you ever have a Spectrum? I, I bought one years later from a car book sale in Watford. Was that about morbid curiosity or something? It was. I mean, that, that you could still buy games for it in shops. I remember buying a, br a brand new copy of Rainbow Islands for it. Mm. So... And, and Chase HQ, because I loved it so much in the Amstrad. I went and bought the Spectrum version. I don't know why. One was weird like that. But uh, yeah, yeah, no, I used to, yeah, I bought it from a car boot sale in Watford. Uh, and the first game I ever played on that was Finders Keepers and Root Beer Tapper. Oh, yes, Tapper. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, not bad port, actually. A bit repetitive, mm. but... 
I, uh, my brother did have a Spectrum back in the day before I had an Amstrad, but he was obsessed with the army and he sold it to buy some army clothing. Oh, okay. uh, That's a fair he exchange. Never, he, he never did join the army, he joined the post office. So Well, and then, and then later on he went on to steal your uh, Dreamcast. Yes. <laughs> so it all goes around in circles, doesn't it? Yes. So one thing after another, yeah. <laughs> you have a vendetta with Parcel Force ever since. Yes. So it's primarily the PlayStation 4 you're into now, I guess. Uh, well, and the X no, Xbox One, I'd say. Yeah. I like the Xbox One slightly more than the PlayStation 4. Are you a Switch man? or? I play it occasionally, mainly cause when a lot of decent game comes out or I fancy buying some really cheap indie games from the store. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, for, I mean, the first couple of years of its life, it really was just like, let's dump as many Wii U games on it as possible kind of situation. Yeah. Um, which I think our friend uh, Top Hat points out quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a, he does have a big bugbear about that, doesn't he? Yes. Oh, poor old Richard. <laughs> Good old Richard. Has he, has he been on yet? Has he been on your podcast? Yet? No, he will be. Um, hopefully, I'm, I'm going to be uh, inviting him on because uh, oh, he has a, obviously a history of the Amstrad as well. And does he? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think might have been one of his first systems. And, of course, Slopes as well. Yes. So, yeah, Dan, yeah. It's um, I can't I kind of find it fi I kind of find it um, amusing in a sort of like self-centered way that a lot of you very successful very talented YouTubers have all started off with the Amstrad. <laughs> yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Yeah, because I always uh, led to believe oh everybody had a Spectrum or something. Or, well, or Kim a, did. Commodore, so Commodore sixty four, if you're a freak. Well, his Kim's dad uh, worked for Amstrad. Oh, you see, 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 even Kim's got a connection. Yeah, you see, there you go. <laughs> Oh, we've got oh, to yeah. do that. I wonder if Pete has as well. Oh, you never know. <laughs> but I think he's more PC based as Pete, I think. I mean, he's with really obscure computers, he is. Yeah. 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 Uh, we're talking about the nostalgia there by everyone, if you yeah. don't know who we're talking about. Yeah, I, I went to his offices a couple of weeks ago to meet Ashton. He's just a massive hoarder now, he is, Pete. Well, you can, you can tell that when he does the videos and look in his office. My God. Mm. You um, can tell by the bottles of Pepsi in the background filled with his own piss. So. <laughs> Do you see that picture with the with the bottles of piss about with that um it was like a like a oh massive multiplayer gamer or something and they had this picture and it had like six or seven bottles of piss on the floor. Oh, I don't I never seen that. Oh, it was gross. That. I mean the the colour of it was like, <laughs> just grim. Oh grim. No, I always remember those hoarded programmes and stuff like that. You always get nutty people and that. Like some woman who was up she had like some crazy cat lady. Yeah, and uh, basically, when, when everyone died, they she used to put it in the freezer, put it in one of those Ziploc sandwich bags in the freezer. And freeze, freeze like cats. Well, yeah, well, yeah, just freeze frozen cat in there. She had loads of them in there, and when they ran out of space, she started putting them in the wardrobe. And, these, <laughs> oh, and they and they and they're going in there, and they're just these bags full of sort of liquid mush. Oh. Like, what the hell's that? And it's like, oh look, there's a bone just floated up to the surface. Oh, oh it used to be a cat. Oh. The smell so, yeah. must have been oh, just yeah. gross. I mean, yeah, I mean, she used to swim in for breeze or something just to get rid of the smell. But oh, yeah, I remember really? that. It's one of the most sickest thing I've ever heard. You just need to napalm the house, I think. Exactly, yeah. Something like that. Oh, absolutely. How the hell have we got onto this subject? Oh, <laughs> oh dear. Well, i tell you what. It's been absolutely fascinating talking to you, Larry. Yes. It's been swell, but the swelling's gone down. I'm glad it has. I'm glad it has. Yes. I know you are getting that treated, aren't you? I am, yes. Excellent, excellent. It's a urinary friction, so. Oh, oh God. Lowering the tone. No, oh. that's normally my... Well, we normally, we're we good at doing that, aren't we, though? Yes, we've got a certain knack of yeah. ruining, hijacking conversations. And making a, and making a, a, a making some sort of off-colour joke where everyone groans. Yes. So, um... Oh dear, yes. But anyway, thank you, Larry Bundy Jr., sir, yeah. for appearing. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, no, my pleasure. Chris. Yes. My pleasure. It's been uh, bug. <laughs> It's been fascinating to hear your stories. Um, like I say, up and down career, amazing history you've got, uh, the people you've worked with over the years. Yes, I'm I've, still upset you haven't done a, a green screen episode of Rainbow Islands yet. You promised me and you haven't done it. Have you? I have. Oh, okay. I have. You clearly don't oh. watch my channel enough. Well, I probably didn't get that video then, yeah. No, I have. You see, you, you've got to click the bell, remember? Oh, yes, click the bell. Your bell's clicked. Oh. So you're going to have to reciprocate me. 
Click my bell. <laughs> Click my bell. Now he's singing songs from the 70s. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get a copyright strike on this now. Oh, we'll let we we'll, we will say a fond farewell to you, bombshell. Miss on that bombshell. You, we're, we're going to have to end with your catchphrase. Oh, well, okay, quickly, actually, where did your catchphrase come from? Did it was it exa- an example, a, a, an accident, uh, should I say, or no? I nicked it from the day to day. So, all right, so it was just so so yeah, basically, no, I, just, I just I just said it because something to say really. Well, my old saying was a uh, goodbye and good gaming, and that sounded a bit. Yes, naff, you did used to say that, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, I used to say that in the uh, in sort of noughties and stuff like that, and I stopped saying that. So I just saying hello you, and people kept catching on. It wasn't even meant to be a catchphrase; it was just a thing to say because I didn't know who I was talking to. I just said hello you as a sort of a term of endearment. Yeah. So you want to start a video saying hello YouTube, which I always think is a bizarre thing to say. So we end on the bombshell that Larry's famous catchphrase is actually an example of plagiarism. Yes. So fuck you. There you <laughs> well, you're welcome. Yeah. Larry Bundy Jr. Sir, you. thank oh. you very much for appearing on the Amstrad, oh, and I wish you, you all, I wish you all the success in the future. Ah, oh, thank you very and much. And of course, I will leave all the links. Not that Larry needs any promotion, of course, but yeah. I will be leaving the links in the description box for Larry's channel, of course. And you'll be obviously oh. listening to this on the Retro and Limb podcast as well. Oh. So, I'll leave you, Larry, to say the final words. Ah, oh, goodbye, you. Well, you should have said goodbye and good gaming. Oh, goodbye and good gaming.